A wide array of movies for this real opinion. One award contender, another wanting to be, and the third not even close. The man with the real opinion lets us know what he thought of Gem and the Holograms, Rock the Casbah, and Steve Jobs. Hey everybody, I'm Gino Reynolds from The Real Opinion. Today on The Real Opinion, we're going to be talking about three movies. One is about a rock promoter finding new talent in the oddest of places. Another is a biopic, I guess, about the man behind the eye. But first, Hasbro yet again alienates its fan base in this all new quick review. I could spend a lot of time on Jim and the Holograms, but I'll sum it up like this. Jim is truly outrageous, truly, truly, truly outrageously terrible. Next up is Rock the Casbah. This movie is an unfunny, unbalanced mess that wasted what could have been an inspiring story, but tried to tell that inspiring story anyway. When this movie tried to be funny, and it tried a lot, it fell flat all but one time, and that was right at the beginning. Liked it. Liked it? A grain of sand slips into an oyster and irritates the bivalve. What happens? A pearl. You are that irritant. So you'll represent me? If you'll have me. That scene right there was the only part that made me laugh. Period. The movie then turned on a dime and it would try to be dead serious. Then back to goofy, then serious, then, well, you get the idea. I think that if it would have focused on the serious plot, which was about a young woman in Afghanistan wanting to sing, it might have been a more interesting story. Instead, they let Uncle Bill loose in a movie whose title does not make sense. His daughter in the film points out that there are no Kasbahs in Afghanistan. I guess it was supposed to be a joke just so they could use the title of the Clash song for their own title, but I don't know. Murray tries to pull off the same type of character that he played in Groundhog Day, which is the irredeemable jerk that changes into the man he should be. However, here he does not even come close to earning this change. Even near the end of the film, he seems to be doing things for himself. I don't like that tone of your voice! This long and unbalanced mess of a movie is not even worth a rental. Next up is Steve Jobs. I never met Steve Jobs, nor do I really know that much about him. But if this movie is a true-to-life biopic, then I can see why his friends aren't too happy with it. I thought that Michael Fassbender does a great job at playing a character with hardly any redeeming qualities, yet you can't look away. This movie portrays Jobs as a selfish, inhuman, and scheming jerk. He may be only as a handful of scenes where you can actually root for him, which don't really help. The story does feel a bit incomplete because we only see what happens at three different periods of time. The announcements of the Mac, the Next, and the iMac. I also felt that certain things kept getting repeated, such as Steve Wozniak, played by Seth Rogen, wanting him and his team to get acknowledged for the Apple II team's work. Though I liked bits and pieces of this movie, it also felt like bits and pieces, which kind of hurt it for me. Still, at least it was way better than the Ashton Kutcher one. But remember, it's only just one guy's opinion. I'm Gino Reynolds from The Real Opinion. Until next time.